from wherever, wherever you are listening to this webinar. Thank you all for finding the time and joining today's webinar entitled Crossing the Bridge, Tailoring Antiviral Prophylaxis by Linking it to CMV-Specific Immunity. My name is Martina Sester. I'm from Saarland University in Germany, and I'm pleased to be joined by fellow panelist Professor Fausto Baldanti from Italy for this webinar, who will briefly discuss what will be covered. And I'm personally happy to chair this seminar because it's also my favorite research topic. So Fausto, please. Thank you, Martina. I'm also very pleased to be here with you and our speakers to discuss this important uh, topic. So as you know, transplant patients, especially those receiving heart and lung transplant, they often suffer from CMV infection and disease. And despite the fact that many of them receive prophylaxis, uh, still yet develop a late onset disease. Specific immunity uh, can protect patients from CMV, viremia, and disease. However, this is a fact that is not widely uh, accepted and considered. So, nor the measures that can be taken to support the patient immune system to building up a strong uh, response immunity against CMV. By attending this uh, ESOT and uh, Biotest webinar, Participants will learn how to evaluate the CMV immunity and why CMV specific immunity is so important for long term out of outcome of the patients. Attendees will also learn how uh, we can support the patient immune system to build up a specific uh, uh, immunity against the virus. Okay, thank you, Fausto. I'm really looking forward to this program and I will just guide you briefly through the, through the agenda. We are very pleased to be joined by two excellent speakers. The first one is Professor Lionel Kuzzi. He is a transplant nephrologist who works in the Department of Nephrology and Transplantation at the Bordeaux University Hospital in France. He is obviously mainly interested in the immune response against CMV infection and if I think of Professor Kuzzi, I immediately think of gamma delta T cells because he has pioneered this T cell type, especially in the context of clinical CMV infection in transplant recipients. So the second speaker is Javier Carbone from the Clinical Immunology Department and Transplant Immunology Unit at Gregorio Maranon University Hospital in Madrid in Spain. He is also a clinical immunologist who deals with primary and secondary immunodeficiencies and solid organ transplantation. His interests also lie in biomarkers to predict infections in solid organ transplant in transplantation. And he is also a specialist in hypogamma globulinemia. And therefore, he's also interested in the reconstitution of antibody deficiency in these settings. And in the context of the current pandemic, it is also interesting to note that he is the principal investigator of immune-based therapies of COVID-19 pneumonia during um, this pandemia. So both will soon give insightful presentations relating to this important and timely topic. Before they give their presentation, I will give a few instructions for, um, question, for the question and answer sessions where you will be involved as an audience. So each presentation will last approximately 20 minutes and there will be a question and answer session when both presentations are complete. So we don't have any questions in between. So to facilitate the question and answers, you should be able to see a Q&A button on your screen. So all attendees can write and submit their questions which will then be seen by the speakers as well as by Fausto and myself. So after the end of both presentations, we will read out the questions, um, which will then be answered by the speakers verbally during the question and answer session. So you write them and the speakers um, answer them verbally. So I would like to ask you to already type in your questions while the speakers are um, 
speaking, because usually if you wait until the end, you tend to forget them. So we don't want to lose any of your thoughts or questions. So please type them in between already. So we will do our best to answer all the questions in the time provided in the end. So I will hand over again to Fausto. Okay, <clears throat> now it is uh, mandatory to remind that this is a webinar supported by Biotest uh, via an, an unrestricted educational grant. You are welcome to share details of this presentation responsibly and with due credit uh, on social media. So without any further delay, I introduce the first speaker, Lionel Cousy. To you, Lionel. Thank you very much, uh, Fausto and Martina. And um, I would like to thank uh, Isot and also Biotest for giving me the opportunity to speak about uh, the monitoring of the CMB specific uh, immunity uh, today. So uh, I need to, to share my screen first. So, sorry. Yes, it should be working. So here are my conflicts of interest. Uh, and um, the first uh, question I would like to answer is uh, why should we take into account CMV specific immunity? Briefly, everybody knows that CMV belongs to the uh, beta herpes virus family. And uh, CMV has a, a long life persistence uh, in latency in, in the host. On this slide, you have a, a, a brief overview of the cellular anti-CMV immune response. Uh, briefly, following uh, infection, a classical adaptive immune response is induced with the expansion of uh, CMV-specific CD4 and CD8 positive T cells uh, in blue uh, here. And the uh, CD8 uh, positive T cells produce antiviral cytokine like gamma interferon, and uh, they can kill CMV infected cells. But these cells are not alone for fighting against TMV, and there are also two other, at least two other types of uh, uh, innate cells, namely the uh, NK cells, uh, there, uh, but also the uh, gamma delta T cells. And uh, these two subsets uh, represent the first line uh, of response to CMV uh, in the tissues. After CMV infection and the occurrence of CMV DNA there, uh, you can uh, observe a few days later uh, the occurrence of a CMV specific CD8 positive T cells in the blood followed by the CD4 positive T cells. And uh, in healthy individuals, CMV specific T cells represent 4% of the overall population of the CD4 positive T cells and up to 9% of the uh, memory compartment uh, as you can see uh, on, the, on the left uh, panel. And this overall representation of uh, CMB specific T cells is also observed uh, uh, on the right uh, within the, the pool of uh, CD8 positive uh, T cells. And gamma delta T cells uh, is also a subset of T cells uh, involved in the control of the, of the virus. And the expansion of the gamma delta T cells, the, the red curve there, uh, parallels uh, the expansion of the CD8, the CMV specific CD8 positive T cells after uh, CMV DNA after CMV infection in uh, solid organ transplant recipients. And uh, all these cells, the CD4, the CD8, the gamma delta T cells, 
uh, are very important for controlling CMV because they can produce cytokines like gamma interferon, they can canalize CMV infected cells, and uh, they have protective roles uh, in mouse models, but also uh, in solid organ transplant recipients. So in summary, there are three key actors involved in the CMV uh, cellular immune response, easily detectable, gamma delta T cells, CD8 and CD4 positive T cells. And in healthy individuals, they are working together for inhibiting CMV, as I previously said. But in immunocompromised individuals, these cells are inhibited by immunosuppression and this situation can lead to the dissemination of the virus and then to CMV disease. CMV disease is still a frequent opportunistic infection after a, a solid organ transplantation. Uh, you know that 60% uh, of uh, these uh, recipients uh, are, zero, are, CM, are CMV zero positive. And among them, around 10% still develop uh, CMV disease. D positive Hermanus patients uh, who are naive regarding the CMV uh, have the highest risk of uh, uh, CMV disease since 20% of them are still experiencing this complication despite uh, appropriate universal prophylaxis with Vulcan cycle. So uh, today, uh, there are uh, many unmet needs in the field of CMV infections. Uh, we need better prevention strategies, we need better treatment strategy, we need second line therapies for patients with resistant CMV infections, and we need also a treatment with a good safety. We know all that all the patients are, are different. And uh, in fact, some patients are experiencing CMV despite prophylaxis, while others do not uh, in the absence of prophylaxis. And today, we really need to know how we can personalize uh, the management of CMV in terms of prevention and treatment. So one way to, to personalize the, the management of CMV infection is to analyze the CMV specific uh, cellular immune response uh, in, in our patient. And the concept is uh, as uh, follow on, on this slide. If your patient uh, displays a, a robust and persistent uh, CMV specific uh, cellular immune response, you will probably not develop any CMV disease or recurrence. And therefore, it is probably unnecessary to offer him antiviral prophylaxis. But if your patient do not display robust or, robust or persistent uh, CMV specific immunity, he will probably develop CMV disease. And in that case, uh, it is probably useful to offer him a prolonged antiviral prophylaxis or to lower immunosuppression or maybe in the future to, infusive, uh, to infuse him uh, CMV specific um, cells or, or antibodies. It's not for today. Uh, so uh, now uh, let's move on to uh, the second question. Uh, which is what are the available ways to evaluate CMV immunity? You probably know that there are a lot of methods of measuring CMV specific T cells. Current method to determine um, T cell functions are on this slide and they include flow cytometry, early spot, here, ELISA, uh, cytokine profiling, uh, TCS spectrotyping, uh, and uh, expansion uh, uh, protocol in proliferation assay. But uh, there are two uh, 
commercial essay uh, which are currently uh, uh, available, the Pantifero CMV essay, uh, and uh, more recently, the uh, uh, two uh, Eli Spot uh, essay. And uh, this, uh, with this essay, you can have the results in less than uh, 48 hours. So uh, on this slide, we, we will try to, uh, I'm going to try to explain how these uh, essays are, are functioning. So on the right, uh, you have the, the Cantifron uh, CMV essay, uh, which is an in vitro diagnosis test, test simple uh, and rapid. The, the first test of uh, this essay uses uh, uh, HLA restricted CMV peptides uh, to stimulate CD8 positive T cells and it consists of three blood tubes containing one of CMV peptides, uh, a positive uh, control with uh, uh, um, a mitogen, and a negative control. The second step uh, is a classical ELISA technique used to measure gamma interferon levels uh, for CMV antigens and for the uh, positive control. The main drawback of this essay is that indeterminate results uh, are frequent in solid organ transplant recipients, probably because of lymphopenia. On the left, uh, you have the principle of the uh, Elispot uh, essay. So uh, it's another uh, commonly used technique that detects the presence of CMV specific T cells by measuring uh, the, the production of gamma interferon in response to uh, CMV antigens. There are two very common CMV antigens, uh, PP65 and IE1. So uh, this uh, essay uh, has the advantage of activating a broader range of effector cells such as CD4 and CD8 positive T cells. It's also highly sensitive, but uh, it requires the isolation of PBMC, which is uh, time consuming. And at the end of this, uh, Say uh, you have to add antibodies against uh, uh, gamma interferon in order to quantify the, the reactivity of uh, your of the CMB specific cells. Okay, so now let's move on to to the third question. Uh, at which time point could it be interesting to look at it? There is huge literature on this topic, but today I choose to show you the, the main papers and, and the main findings. So uh, as you can see uh, on this slide, there are at least four scenarios in which the contribution of the CMV immune monitoring uh, could be useful for to transplant physicians for improving patients' care. Uh, at transplantation, at the end of prophylaxis, at the end, at the onset of the infection or at the end of the infection. So we can start uh, at the beginning of the transplantation. And uh, at this stage, the, the monitoring of the uh, CMV immune response could inform clinical decision and predict the risk of subsequent CMV infection or disease. And for instance, preventive treatments could be avoided uh, in patients uh, with a, 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 a robust and protective CMV specific immune response. Uh, so let's move on uh, to the data which, data which support uh, that concept uh, in uh, the naive patients in D positive R minus patients. In this paper of uh, Oriol Bestard group in, in Barcelona, the author, authors reported that a CMV specific cell immunity was observed uh, in around 30% uh, 
of G positive R minus patient. You can see uh, the uh, level of gamma interferon production in this uh, seronegative recipient at the time of uh, uh, transplant. Uh, it was determined thanks to uh, the early spot assay. And the, the identification of uh, uh, CMV specific cell immunity in CMV seronegative recipients highlight the fact that the CMV stero status could give a misclassification of patients regarding the risk of CMV infection. And when you look at the incidence of CMV disease in this cohort of uh, G positive R minus recipients, you can clearly observe that the patient who had a significant uh, CMV specific uh, cellular immunity at transplantation against uh, the PP65 antigen or against the IE1 antigen, uh, these, these patients did not develop any. CMV, CMV disease, suggesting a protective role of these cells. At the beginning of transplantation, we are still uh, at this stage, the monitoring of the uh, CMV immune response was also tested recently in our positive patient to predict the risk of subsequent CMV infection or disease uh, in order to, to, to determine whether prophylaxis is useful or not. And um, I would like to, to show you a very uh, nice and very recent study coming again from the Oriol Bestar group in Barcelona. And uh, they analyzed uh, in uh, CMV seropositive kidney transplant recipients before transplantation and 15 days post transplantation. Uh, and they identified um, two groups based on the presence or not of uh, a CMV uh, specific immunity using uh, an LI spot uh, assay. Uh, the patients were next randomized to receive either a universal prophylaxis or a preemptive strategy. And they observed that uh, the uh, CMV zero positive patient who had a, a, a robust CMV specific uh, cellular immunity before transplantation on the, on the left in blue, uh, developed less CMV infection than uh, those uh, who did not have a, a, a strong CMV uh, immunity to, uh, in red, uh, in red on, on, the, on, the, on the left. And uh, it was true for the two subgroups, uh, in the preemptive group, uh, the dotted line, and in the, the prophylaxis group, the, the solid line, as you can see there. More interestingly, they did the same an analysis uh, at, at day 15 post-transplantation, and they found that patients displaying at day 15 uh, 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 strong CMV uh, cellular immunity did not uh, develop any subsequent CMV infection, as you can see here uh, on the left, either uh, uh, re no, sorry, regardless of the, the preventive strategy chosen. So these data also suggest that preventive treatment could be avoided in these uh, R-positive patients with a CMV-specific T-cell response at 15-day post-transplantation. Uh, the second scenario is uh, um, at the end of the prophylaxy or during the antiviral prophylaxis, where the, the monitoring of the CMV immune response could also uh, inform a clinical uh, uh, decision. And uh, it was uh, evaluated in this paper of Oriol Manuel, who uh, used the quantiferon assay. And fortunately, uh, he uh, reported that only 12% of uh, the uh, D positive and minus patients had developed a CMV cell mediated immunity at the end of the, of the prophylaxy, and that 23% uh, of them had an indeterminate assay, as I told you uh, before. And uh, here are the results. 
the few patients, the, the green line who acquired the CMV, cell mediated immunity, uh, after the prophylaxis did not develop CMV infection, but uh, the patients uh, who had uh, the highest risk of CMV disease had an undeterminate essay. This is the, the blue line. So in conclusion, this essay uh, was not uh, able to, to predict the risk of uh, subsequent CMV disease in this scenario. Um, this, um, it was also um, analyzed uh, in a recent study uh, from uh, Dipali Kumar uh, in D positive R minus patient and R positive patient. And this study confirmed that uh, CMV cell mediated immunity at the end of the prophylaxis uh, was a, a very rare event in uh, the D positive R minus patient. Uh, this study also confirmed that the patient who had the lowest risk of CMV disease have had a positive assay and then a robust uh, CMV immunity, but uh, this finding was only true in R positive recipients and not in the, the group uh, which, have, uh, which have the highest risk. So let's move on to the third scenario. Uh, so uh, CMV uh, cell cellular immunity uh, could also be analyzed at the beginning uh, of CMV infection in asymptomatic patients uh, because patients could have a spontaneous virus clearance if they have a, 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 a protective CMV uh, immunity and on the opposite if they do not have this uh, immune response maybe uh, they should receive a, 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 a treatment. And uh, very few data are supporting uh, this, this concept. Only one study with uh, uh, only 40 patients included. But in this small paper, the, the author uh, observed that uh, CMV uh, cell-mediated immunity uh, was able to predict spontaneous clearance without treatment, as, as, uh, as you can see uh, here and, and here. And to finish, uh, just one word uh, on the last scenario where CMV uh, immunity could inform clinical decision. Uh, it's uh, at the end of uh, the curative antiviral treatment for CMV disease to predict uh, um, uh, the recurrence and to determine the necessity of a secondary prophylaxis. Uh, so it was... Uh, tested uh, in uh, this study uh, where 27 transplant recipients were enrolled at the onset of the treatment. Uh, and at the end of the uh, treatment with uh, gantaclovir or valgantaclovir, uh, CMV cell mediated immunity uh, was uh, uh, analyzed and uh, uh, patient with uh, CMV immunity had antivirals discontinued, whereas patient with a negative cell mediated immunity were assigned to receive the secondary prophylaxis. And here are the results. Uh, patient with uh, a positive CMV cell mediated immunity at the end uh, uh, of the curative treatment developed a very few recurrence and on the opposite, the other uh, had a, a high rate of uh, recurrence despite prophylaxis. This result was confirmed by our group in Bordeaux using the, the gamma delta T cells. Uh, and as you can see on the left, 95% uh, of patients who had uh, gamma delta T cells uh, against CMV at the end of the treatment at seven weeks uh, uh, did not develop any, any recurrence. So in conclusion, today, the management of CMV infection relies on uh, CMV serostatus, the type of immunosuppression, the detection and quantification of CMV in the blood, and then the prescription of uh, valgantaclovir or gantaclovir. Uh, I hope you are now convinced that tomorrow, the integration of the CMV-specific cellular immunity could help to personalize preventive and curative CMV treatment uh, in solid organ transplant recipients uh, at different time post-transplantation and in different scenarios. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much, Lionel, for this informative presentation. And um, we have just heard that the management of CMV infection does not 
in fact uh, match the one size fits all yeah. principle. So, and I will immediately move on to Javier, um, who will in fact deal now with designing a tailored CMV specific immunity. And just before he starts, I would just encourage the audience to already pose their questions in the Q&A button or using this, uh, this function, because then we have them, the questions already by, by the end of the next talk and we can make much of our time that we have left then. So please, Javier, I would like to invite you to give your presentation. So maybe Javier, do you have to switch on your microphone? Yes. It's okay now? Okay, yes, please. Perfect. And if you could start the, the presentation mode of your presentation, then we see it in a larger screen. Thank you. Thank you, Martina. And thank you for inviting me to this ESOT and Biotest webinar. These are my conflicts of interest, and I will discuss of label use of a specific anti CMB intravenous immunoglobulin. So, the idea is that the immune system needs to deal with CMB infection in solid organ transplantation. And the question is, how can this be potentiated, leaving the patient less unprotected beyond antiviral prophylaxis? For example, we, try, we can try to increase binding and neutralization of free virus particles, or we can try to support the immune system to mount a lasting response by improving antigen presentation or by improving T and B cell responses. And only if we are able to improve these functions, we can, we can start talking about the potential role of these strategies to improve clinical CMB management protocols by using, for example, mTOR inhibitors, or by using CMB immunoglobulin, or by using CMB cellular therapy with CTL, or with other subsets, as has been mentioned before. And why not to dream with a CMB vaccine? And we will comment in the last slide. So as you can see here, the immune response to CMB is quite complex. We need uh, antibodies for virus neutralization. We need uh, CTL, CD8 specific T cells. We need antibody mediated the dependent cellular cytotoxicity by NK cells, also chemotaxis by neutrophils, a very complex system of antigen presentation, including TLR, direct and cross antigen presentation, but CD4 and CD80 cells. And even we need participation of the complement system for cytolysis. So, we need not only cellular immunity, which is probably the main effector of control of CMB infection, but we also need the collaboration of antibodies, antigen presenting cells, and distinct components of innate immunity. Indeed, we've seen the 180 clinical trials that are complete or are ongoing. There are several looking for a potentiation of T and B cell specific immune responses. So it seems that there is an active interest of improving the immune response. Beginning with the potential role of mTOR inhibitors, this is a summary of antiviral and immunomodulatory properties of these drugs. And this includes 
inhibition of viral cell growth, interference with virus-mediated transcriptional events, an effect on memory T cells, increasing the functionality of T cells in response to vaccination, as well as to other viral stimuli, and also the potential role in increasing CMV-specific CD8 and CD4 T cell responses as compared with other known mTOR inhibitors containing regions. We will talk about uh, more in detail about the potential role of CMB IVIG for this issue. Label indication of these products is the prophylaxis of clinical manifestations of CMB infections in patients receiving immunosuppressive therapy, particularly in transplant recipients. What is the rationale of the use of CMB IVIG? to prevent or treat CMV-related complications. We must remember that among the immunological risk factors, we have IgG hypogamma globulinemia demonstrated in several multicenter studies and introducing new guidelines uh, that were published uh, two years ago. And of course, low specific immunity, as, as I ha it has been mentioned before, but also lower specific anti-CMV titers. And indeed, as you know, all IVIG products and CMV IVIG is another IVIG product has intact IgG molecules with normal IgG subclass distribution and normal half-life comparable to serum IgG. We all know that after transplantation, immune suppressed patients will have significantly lower levels of specific anti-CMB titers. And indeed, these products have significantly higher levels of these antibodies. As you can see here, comparing, for example, when non-specific CMB IVIG. But not only CMB antibodies. These products have the potential to have significantly higher levels of herpes antibodies, or Epstein-Barr virus antibodies, and even higher titers of anti measles antibodies. We were able to demonstrate in a study that we were able to reconstitute IgG the IgG-specific anti-CMB concentration in patients that were receptor negative when we added CMB IVIG. And in this study, from the group of OPELs, they were able also to confirm that the CMB IVIG product that they used, they used in some in, in a cohort of uh, kidney recipients uh, had higher levels of anti CMB titers and of anti Epstein Barr virus antibodies. And they were able to demonstrate that these patients who accumulated a lower incidence of lymphoproliferative syndrome after follow a long-term follow-up uh, after kidney transplantation. So among the mechanisms of action, not only to have higher levels of specific antibodies, also neutralization of free virus particles, antibody opsonization, and the high titer of reactive antibodies. More recently, and very interestingly, we have new evidence that, they, that these products have a potential role in increasing a specific anti-CMV immunity. So the studies have evaluated the still cell responses in vitro. For example, you can see here, this study by Ludwig Dem, demonstrating bas Eli spot and by flow cytometry, higher levels of CTL activity when we add CMV IVIG in the system. And these higher levels of CTL activity was maintained if you added cyclosporin A just to test this uh, model in immunosuppressive context. It has been hypothesized that the opsonization of free CMV particles by CMV IVIG 
increase the cross presentation of CMV antigens to CDL, CD8 T cells through MAC class one molecule. And in this, in this study, you can see in vivo patients tre being treated with valgan cyclovir combined with CMV IgG, they disclose higher levels of quantiferum CMV tests. So why we think it is very important to improve the T cell immunity and the B cell immunity in these patients, in solid organ recipients? Well, in the receptor minus negative uh, scenario, of course, we have the, the very low or absent levels of CMV titers, but we have also demonstrated lower levels of CD8 cells and these team studies, and I, this was mentioned also before, have demonstrated that the immunological profile of this patient is not only to be seronegative, but also to have low CD8 and high NK and low NK and the CMV response. So if you try to improve this uh, cellular function with an uh, immunological strategy, it's a good idea for these patients but not only for receptor negative. In receptor positive recipients, we, we another demonstrated that lower levels of anti-CMB titers, lower levels of CD8 cells producing interferon anti incubation with PA1 antigen were at higher risk of CMB infection. In our study after heart and in other studies have demonstrated the same after solid organ. So um, we have that CMV IVIG have the potential to increase antibodies and have the potential to increase CMV specific CD8 responses. But very interestingly, these, these drugs has, have also the potential of immune modulation in transplantation that would be interesting as an added value for anti-rejection mechanisms. We must remember the, and the indirect effects of the CMB infection, including chronic allograft rejection, bronchiolitis obliterance in lung recipients, transplant vasculopathy in heart recipients, and tubular interstitial fibrosis in kidney recipients. You can see here See, see here the, the immunomodulatory mechanism according to the FAB and FC dependent parts of the immunoglobulin. And you can see the targets of the CMB or IBIG products, TB and dendritic cell and NK cells. In a study performed in high risk CMB recipients, we were able to demonstrate, as compared with controls, that patients receiving CMV IVIG demonstrated to have a significant increase of naive B cells. And, and it is very interesting because higher levels of naive B cells are associated with lower rates of acute rejection in heart transplantation. And also it is interesting because the B regulatory cells in wolf intolerance induction express naive cell markers. We also observed an impressive decrease of activated CD4 cells with a tendency to a decrease of CD8 activated cells. And more recently, we analyzed the percentage and the level of regulatory T cells, and we were able to demonstrate that patients receiving CMB, IVIG, disclose significantly higher levels of regulatory T cells. These patients received induction therapy with anti-CD25 monoclonal antibodies. The group of Quick and Bone demonstrated the effect of CMB IVIG in vitro on T cells and dendritic cells. They demonstrated decreased acquisition of allogenic T cell stimulatory capacity in, in dendritic cells, and also a decrease of, of peripheral blood T cell stimulated with allogenic splenic antigen-presenting cells. And also, 
the group of Ludwig Fem demonstrated a higher interferon gamma anti nerve production by NK cells when they added CMB IVA. We will further evaluate these responses with a biotest sponsored research. We will evaluate in vivo heart and lung recipients, and we will evaluate the kinetics of T and B cell subsets and polyfunctional responses of CD8, CD4, and NK subsets. And using the previous studies in the impact of CMBIVIG in the prevalence of rejection, I consider it was interesting to remember that several studies have demonstrated significantly lower rates of acute rejection in patients receiving prophylaxis with CMBIVIG. Just a few examples, Potena in heart transplantation, Ruthman, lung transplantation, Valentine, lung transplantation, and this meta-analysis by Bonaros demonstrating lower rates of CMB disease and lower rates of um, rejection when the patients use CMB IVIG. So it seems that this strategy has the potential of a polyfunctional effect, including antibody and T cell responses. Of course, we, of course, we can try to improve the, the cellular immunity by immune cell therapy, for example, using CMB CTLs. And you can see here a lot of clinical trials that, that have been completed or are, are ongoing, but the, these have been mainly performed in hematopoietic stem cell transplantation. This is uh, interesting to see because in solid organ recipients, the stimulation ex vivo of these cells and then the infusion in vivo to get up the cellular immunity is not so easy, it's more complicated. And the same, we can try to improve CMB specific immunity by CMB vaccines. The majority of trials, again, are in stem cell transplantation, but of course, this is the future and we are waiting the result of these clinical trials. Just to finish, let me, let me to introduce you the, our transplant immunology group at the Gregorio Marañón Hospital in Madrid. Thank you very much. Thank you, Javier. Javier. Yeah. So <clears throat> now we can uh, start asking the questions. So I was uh, actually uh, checking the, um, the question box, uh, and uh, there is a cluster of um, questions uh, relevant to immunoglobulin and a cluster of questions relevant to um, T cell immunity. So I think we can start with the questions on uh, T cell immunity uh, to Lionel. What do you think, Martina? Yes. So um, there are actually two questions around uh, gamma delta T cells uh, by Davide Abate from Italy. And um, I can just ask them together for Lionel. So he first asks um, whether, given that they are also part of the innate immunity, whether they also mediate protection towards other viruses such as EBV or BKV. Is there anything known on that? And the other question around that is, um, you mentioned that these cells are residents of tissues. So um, does this correlate, or what you actually measure in blood, does this correlate to the activity in the, um, in the tissue. And maybe just one question I posed myself was, um, you could probably also briefly speculate on the effector mechanism. You mentioned you, on your slides, you had a, a FC receptor on, on these cells. Is that true? Is that the mechanism that they probably work? So please, Lionel. Yeah, uh, so thank you for this question. So uh, in fact, there are two subsets 
of uh, gamma delta T cells and the subset specific for CMV usually uh, has the um, TCRV delta one chain. And these gamma delta T cells seems to be very specific to uh, CMV because we do not observe uh, any um, gamma delta T cell expansion in patient after other um, uh, herpes virus infection, for instance. And in vitro, uh, these uh, uh, V delta one gamma delta T cells uh, do not uh, react against uh, uh, other viruses. Uh, for the second questions uh, about the circulation of gamma delta T cells between the tissues and the blood, uh, yes, we these cells are known to be a tissue resident uh, in uh, epithelia uh, in the gut mainly, uh, but after CMV infection, uh, we observe the recirculation of these cells uh, probably from the tissue to the blood, uh, but um, today it's still unclear uh, why and, and how they, they recirculate. So, so I'm sorry, it's not very easy to, to answer this, these questions. And uh, regarding your questions, Martina, about uh, the expression of uh, FC gamma receptor, says you're right. They uh, express the CD16 uh, uh, receptor, which uh, uh, is involved in the recognition of uh, um, CMV uh, IgG. And uh, uh, it's not useful for performing uh, ADCC, but they can produce uh, gamma interferon when uh, they uh, encounter uh, CMV immune complex and uh, they are using CD16 for inhibiting uh, uh, CMV replication, probably in the tissue. Okay, thank you very much for this comprehensive um, answer to this uh, complex of questions. So um, I see another question maybe for you. Um, this is a round of um, cutoffs for um, viral load to start treatment and when should we stop the medication? Mm. So that's around viral yeah. load. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, according to, to, the, to the guidelines, uh, uh, during CMV therapy, uh, the, the, th the threshold for starting therapy is, uh, is currently unknown. It depends on your center and uh, uh, it depends uh, also of your uh, PCR. So there are no answer to this question, unfortunately, to date. Uh, it's easier to, to answer to the, to the second question regarding the, the eradication of CMV DNA uh, because uh, it's uh, defined as a CMV PCR below the um, lower limit of quantification of one highly uh, sensitive assay. If you have uh, this assay, I think, and if you do not have a, a highly sensitive uh, assay, a sensitive PCR, uh, you need to have uh, two consecutive undetectable uh, results, if I remember well, to, to, to say that you, your patient uh, eradicated uh, CMVD anemia. Okay, thank you. Before I hand over to Fausto to... Uh to give the questions to Javier around treatment. I have one more question for you, Lionel, and this is on CMV specific immunity assays and availability. So yeah. um, do you, or could you just give an overview of, or, or your, your, um, your impression of how these assays are currently assessed in the transplant center? Is that in, done in, in most centers or is that rather a, year, a rare thing? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's quite rare because um, in fact, convincing data showing the interest of uh, uh, spot in the monitoring of uh, Simbesura immunity uh, 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 transplantation for, for instance, uh, uh, all these 
data uh, are, are very recent and uh, are coming from uh, the excellent group of uh, Oriol Bestard in, in Barcelona. So uh, today I think very few people are using this essay, but uh, I think that uh, uh, tomorrow uh, the Elispot essay will, will be used by a lot of transplant physicians. Okay, so I guess there are a few more for you, but I switch on to, uh, <laughs> Thank to you. Uh, Fausto to have a few questions for Javier. Yeah, yeah. Uh, before moving to Javier and according to the, <clears throat> to the last point uh, addressed, uh, just uh, uh, a communication. So ESOT completed the survey and the data will be available soon on the, um, the approach uh, testing for T cell specific immunity against cytomegalovirus in different European centers. Okay, moving to immunoglobulins, I will try to group some of the, um, the questions for Javier. So there is a group of questions, all of them dealing on the same topic basically. So, and is, which is the best uh, scenario to use the immunoglobulins. So in which patient and at which stage of the infection or the uh, prophylaxis, uh, adding uh, or sequential uh, use. So Javier, can you? Yes. Well, we must take into account the label indication, which is prophylaxis of CMB infection in immune suppression, especially in transplant recipients. So according to the, this label indication, we must use, uh, or we can use a CMB IDIG to prevent CMB infection. According to the distinct scenarios that we have been presenting today, the more clear is the, the high-risk recipient, which is the patient that is having uh, is seronegative and receive a CMB positive uh, organ from, from a CMB positive donor. So in the previous editions of the guidelines, this was uh, accepted as a practice in some specific centers. So, uh, and mainly in the very high risk recipients, including heart recipients, lung recipients, and intestine recipients in which CMB infection is specifically more dangerous. Uh, so in the last edition of the, C the, the, the consensus document, there was a decrease in the level of recommendation for, this, for those patients, but obviously uh, the, the problem is the lack of um, previous uh, clinical trials with a uh, great number of patients that have been performed before. But probably is the, the best uh, starting point of a clinical scenario, the high risk patients and mainly heart and lung recipients. Other interesting and, and potential scenario is a patient with IgG hypogammalobulinemia, severe hypogammalobulinemia below four grams per liter, below 400 milligrams per deciliter and having severe CMB infection. This is out of the indication because, because it's for therapy, but several guidelines suggest that future studies have must concentrate in this high-risk patient with hypogamma, severe hypogamma, and having a CMB infection, which is difficult to control. If I want to select two scenarios, I will say these two. Okay. There was a, a specific question on the possible mm. use of uh, um, immunoglobulins in uh, preventing recurrences. And in that case, which frequency of the um, administration? Yes. Uh, the first thing I must uh, say very clearly is that CMB, IVIG, by, uh, for prophylaxis and for therapy, should be used along with a proper uh, antiviral therapy. It's adjunctive therapy, not as monotherapy. So the label indication use several doses in one milliliter per kilo, and then 
the, the label indication proposed a number of doses and probably um, we don't have a labeled indication for therapy, but in patients having IgG hypogammaglobulinemia and severe uh, recur or recurrent CMV infection not, that is not responding to a proper antiviral therapy, we combine with CMV IVIG in a period of, of approximately uh, two or three months with repeated doses. Okay. So there was a, a critical question. Any observed adverse event during treatment? With yeah, the I, IVIG products have the potential to have adverse reactions. Some, the most common are related with infusion, uh, the, the, the infusion related reactions, uh, some headaches or mild fever. These are not frequent because patients are pre-medicated because of they, they are receiving corticosteroids and immune suppressive drugs. So these kind of reactions are not, not frequently observed, but you can see that. Severe, severe reactions with replacement doses are very, very low. But in the theory, we have the risk of renal failure and only in high doses uh, thrombotic events. But in the doses that we are using a specific CMV IVIG, it is, is very uh, improbable to have severe reactions. Okay. Um, thank you. I think uh, we more or less covered all the, the questions that have been uh, sent uh, uh, through the through the the window the Q and A uh, window. Uh, so, Martina, would you like to add something? Yeah. So um, there are still a few questions left, but given that the time slot is now over, I would like to encourage you to um, keep your questions and uh, send them by email. So there is a. Um, you, you will see uh, soon see uh, uh, an email address where you can send the, the questions. And um, so that is here, yes. You can uh, use this email address to send your remaining questions and those will be answered by Lionel and Javier. And um, I would like to announce the next seminar that will be on Monday 21st. If you got, just go one slide back, yes. Here you see the title. It will be on herpes virus infections after heart and lung transplantation when CMV and, and EVV go rogue. So you're again invited at the same time in two weeks time to this seminar. So um, as a brief wrap up from my side, I think we had a very interesting seminar. We learned more that more and more essays are becoming clinically available and we have nice area of applications and also, meanwhile, the first randomized trials that have now appeared on the application of um, immunology methods for tailoring um, management of CMV infection. And from the second presentation, we have heard that we not only have the antiviral treatment with um, antivirally active drugs, but also new therapeutic options that are, for example, uh, mTOR inhibitors, IVIG, T-cell therapy, and maybe eventually also a vaccine. So I think there is enough research on the horizon and promising research that we actually will have sometime a very tailored uh, management of CMV infection. So with that, I would like to conclude and thank you very much for having attended this seminar. And I will briefly hand over to Fausto again and say goodbye at, for myself. Yeah, I, thank you, Martina. I would like uh, just to also thank you everybody for being here, for the speakers, for the fantastic um, presentation. And uh, so uh, finally, um, thank you and uh, have a good evening. Goodbye. Goodbye. Thank you.